Nollywood is one of the fastest growing film industries in the world. And on this Africa Day, we have Nigerian film, television, theater, and voiceover star, Dayemi Okanawan, to tell us some more about all that's happening. Good morning, my friend. Great to have you. Good morning, Dahlia. It's, it's amazing to finally be on your show. I really, really appreciate the opportunity. It's afternoon here in, in Nigeria, in Lagos, Nigeria. Oh, that's right. Six hours, right? Yes, yeah, six please, whole hours. Please, yes, don't ask me to do the math on air. <laughs> Let's talk a little bit, though, Dayami, about just how Nigerian film has evolved. I mean, for us here in Jamaica, we started out watching the DVDs um, with Omatola. Interestingly, yes. um, Blood Sisters then was one of the biggest things for us to watch. Yes, and it now it's the biggest thing on Netflix. Yeah. Uh, what's been the secret to that growth and development of African film? Well, um, I'll speak specifically to Nigerian film. Mm -hmm. um, if you know anything about Nigerians, we are, you know, resilient. You know, I, I, think, I think they could just change this country's name to the Federal Republic of Resilience because Nigerians are some of the most resilient people in the world. Yeah. Um, and just by sheer determination, people have invested their time, you know, their resources into a film industry without any external support, no government support. For many, many years, they have built an industry from scratch. And I think you really can, can um, attribute that to one, our resilience, but also the fact that we understand the power of storytelling. Mm -hmm. um, and that's how we've, we've, um, we've uh, been able to pass across our history. It's always been the verbal or orally done. Mm -hmm. You know, so bringing those two things together, we are storytellers by nature, um, and then we are also very resilient, and we're able to build an entire industry from scratch. I like the diversity. We were talking about Omogeto um, of air, and Omogeto captures so much of, I mean, the language. We have to read the subtitles, but we don't care, because <laughs> we're seeing the pigeon, but we love it. And then there are, there are, there are huge films like um, The King of Boys, you know, the classic Castle and Castle, of which you're also a part, and now Blood Sisters. What accounts for that kind of diversity in, in Nigerian film? How do you mean? You mean in terms of storytelling? In terms of storytelling and style and just the differences in what yes. we see. Yes. Um, so Nigeria is, is a potpourri of many things, you know. Um, first of all, remember that we were colonized by the British. Mm -hmm. um, and so there are elements of, of that era still remaining. There are people who belong to a certain class and live a certain type of life. Yes. And when they tell their stories, their stories will look like what you have in Blood Sisters, for example, mm -hmm. um, which is on screen right now. Yeah. Um, and uh, if, if, if you go to the, to the guys who are like the inner city ghetto type people, then you have you know, those stories that you, that you see being told in Omo Ghetto. Um, Castle and Castle encompasses the corporate world, you know, people who are educated, academia, um, and that's about um, the legal aspect of Nigeria and actual real cases. We were using actual real cases um, and, and putting that in the, in the script. Um, and so there's such a diversity in terms of um, our, our stories because, you know, we have over 200 tribes in Nigeria alone. We have three major tribes, but there are oh, oh, just about 200 other tribes, you know, that are as influential and so we have so many stories come from so many different parts and of course we have the whole social strata you know giving us um, their own version of of the nigeria that they live or the mm -hmm. africa that they live yeah. so that's that i think that's what that's what that's where all our stories and the diversity of our stories come from yeah uh, and it is so huge across the world did you did you even envision because a lot of times and i tell people this we we, we log on to the hollywood model and we think that that's it but now we see on netflix where blood sisters drops and it's in the top five most popular shows on the streaming platform um did you even foresee that that this would happen so did we foresee um i think because of the level of belief we have in ourselves mm -hmm. you know we we would have had those conversations in the past saying oh nigeria to the world africa to the world we are going to make sure the world hears our story. Um, although they've been hearing our story for years, yeah. we just never had the right resources, you know, and the right channels to make sure that it was it was a profitable and high quality venture. Mm -hmm. um, and now everything is coming together. 
now we have the resources to tell our stories exactly the way they should be told. You know, we're not trying to cut corners or anything. Um, and on the other hand, um, we have the distribution channels. You know, the VOD platforms have democratized distribution, so we can now get our stories to be heard, to be seen, you know, by the rest of the mm -hmm. world. Mm -hmm. You know I'm impressed by the work ethic. I, I, I'll see a film drop today, and then tomorrow you'll have another one up, and then there'll be another one, and then I say, how many hours are there in Nigeria? Because clearly you have like about 10 more than we do in Jamaica. Um, <laughs> how, how do you guys maintain that kind of work rate? Well, um, I don't know. It's just, I guess, because we figured out our own style uh, of filmmaking, mm -hmm. you know, and it's still evolving. You know, mm -hmm. we we went. It's it's. This is literally almost like guerrilla type filmmaking, where you're going to the barest minimum, you know, um, and and you're making it work. Um, and over time, we have increased, you know, our spend. We've seen that spend translate to increased quality of film, and then we've seen that also translate to increased revenue mm -hmm. of film. So it's it's really going up and up and up. But Nigerians are really, really hardworking people. Um, and, and because we have such a large market, we, we're 200 million people strong, right? Yeah. And so if, I mean, so there's enough, you know, of a market to, to sell stories to. Um, the last figures that we had that, I, that I'm aware of was putting us at about 2,500 movies per year, wow. um, which makes us the second, you know, highest, you know, um, producers of film in the world. Yeah. Um, but I still think that that's, for films that are properly registered. Mm -hmm. I'm sure there might be another 5,000 <laughs> that are not accounted for. I'm sure, and you do about 8,000 a year, don't you? <laughs> What's next? What's next for you, my friend? So, you know, I've, I've come from a, I come from a corporate background, but first I studied engineering at the University of Lagos here in Nigeria. I went on into a career in sales and marketing, and now I'm an actor. And I'm at the point in my career where the two things that are very evident the kind of work that i want to do now i have to go outside you know nigeria to the rest of africa i i want to be an african storyteller okay. not just a nigerian storyteller mm -hmm. and so now i'm i'm collaborating and having conversations with you know um uh, people from all over africa from kenya south africa egypt you know uganda you know th these different filmmaking hubs ghana as well you know to produce to make films and, um, and to be, you know, the kind of films that I really want to be, this is something that I'm really passionate about. And I'm very, very, um, I've worked very hard to increase my skill at. Uh, so I want to do it at the highest level in the world. But also it has become necessary that I start being involved in, you know, producing the kind of films that I want to see. So um, both as an actor and as a producer, there are a lot of things that are on my plate right now that I'm working on. All right, well... Empty the plate a little bit and, and remember us folks here in Jamaica. <laughs> Will do. Will do. So great talking to you. I know, I know you're busy and I'm glad you took some time to speak with us. Guys, you can follow him on Instagram. Just go over and give him a shout. He's one of your favorite African actors and just share some love from Jamaica. Deyeme, always good talking to you, my friend. Thanks, Dalia. Thank uh, you. All right, Deyeme Okinawa, Bye -bye. Nollywood actor. Up next... Taking fine art across the region. We'll soon come. <laughs>